Hi y'all, um, Freeze Crack here again. Say, so, oh that rock there, that that was a, a prop from a previous video on fluting. Um, Cause it's the same day, I'm only gonna post these the same day, but this is an unrelated video. And I showed earlier, these are my Heidelberg dueling scars from from dealing with uh, a, a flipped out going nuts cat named Mutz during a crisis yesterday. You know, I was gonna put this lighter glove on because I didn't want to look stupid in, one, in my work, but I think I'll put the heavier leather glove on because that way I won't look as stupid from a safety standpoint. Because I want to talk about spalling a little bit. Okay, here's the deal. Spalling is an art form. I mean, it really is an extreme skill that a very small percentage of flint nappers possess. And I'm not one of them. So, as usual, it's like, don't do as I do, do as I say or teach. So, although you're, you're on your own either way, so. Anyway, this is the box that I was drawing on from the previous demo, and so that this is a great box. What this box is, is it's a, it's a box that a whole bunch of lids for five gallon buckets came in. See, it says five gallon bucket lid. And I bought all those lids because I figure out a sight out of mine, so if I put some of the buckets, I can, all the, the rock, I can stack the buckets. I'm trying to get, there's method to my madness usually. Okay, we're in, we're, we're fast approaching hurricane season, and where I am, that's a big deal because we get sometimes three or four things lined up in the, in the ocean looking at us at the same time, and some have been really bad. So anyway, what I want to do this year is have it to work because I got my son to, finally to get his boat out of the garage. So I figured this year will be the year that either my wife or I, we can argue about and fight over whose vehicle is going to be safer in the approach of a storm by getting it in the garage. In order to do that, I have to move like 90 buckets or have them somewhere. So anyway, uh, but I digress. Here's the side of a rock. There's where you hit the rock. You don't do that when you're spalling. Normally, you want a thicker flake than anything you're gonna get off hitting off an edge. You can get some thickish flakes off the edge by hitting inward at a, if you get a thick edge and a thick preform or core, whatever you wanna call it, you can hit inward and cause your flight to go in and roll out and reverse hinge. And you see a lot of cores out in the field where the old boys did that. They just wanted to point an arrowhead uh, flake or a small knife flake or tool flake. And they would intentionally do these rollouts straight inward to get that great flint that's just under the cortex and, and not get the bad flint that's in the middle of most nodular Texas stuff. But it's not the optimal way. I do sometimes, if somebody tells me, oh, I want a bunch of arrowhead flakes or something, and they were sitting there bugging me about it, and I needed to get them off my case so I can go in with something else, make them a bunch of arrow flakes real quick. You can do a bunch of this kind of stuff on a core and stop before you mess up getting into the center part where you would have your big biface, and then go ahead and work off all your troubles that you create by hitting all those hinges into the thing and get the biface while still getting a bunch of straight flat flakes. The key thing there is you don't want to put support along here because if you do, you're going to have curve flakes. But your average platform, you know, for spalling is this steep, but not more steep, down to maybe, you know, that steep because you're driving in above the edge and you're doing it at an angle that will translate into a run that's thick enough to get you a fairly thickish flick. But the support underneath, <clears throat> flat general support underneath can be critical. And the reason is there's a lot of force necessary in spalling. And so you need to have a way to control 
your core a little bit while you do it. Okay, so spalling hammers. The truth is <coughs> that there's a number of gee whiz spallers that use these, but there are also a number of gee whiz spallers that use annealed mild steel hammers in the field. They hide that fact. It's a secret. It's a trade secret using steel hammers. But the thing about it is you got to know what you're doing. Are you going to put a cone the size of Dallas in that rock? Anyway, neither one of these hammers are very good at the moment because I haven't used them enough. As you use them, they dome out. <coughs> the more dome they get, they get domed all the way down almost to the thing and much wider, but they got this cool convexity to the surface and everything that's just kind of perfect. And they work better the more you use them. This is like a three pound, this is like a one pound. I had like a five or seven pound, I can't remember what, but I. I put it in an auction and a nap in because, you know, I don't have, see, here's the problem I have. You see how that's like where that muscle is supposed to be? It's not there. So I'm like 170 pounds soaking. I was a monster when I was younger. You believe me, don't you? Okay, so I got a bunch of rocks here. I'll start hitting this one. This rock, I don't know why I have it, because it looks like kind of low-grade Pedernales area stuff, but it has, so there's a big crack in it, and here's a big crack that goes all the way apart. So apparently I hit this a few times at some point in the past and decided to just put it away until it was miraculously healed on a rainy day or something. Oops. You know why I did that. I just love showing stuff like that. But that was just one crack. This is still all the other cracks, so let's see. There, you can say you saw a freeze crack. Take a spall with a three pound hammer and actually create a spall that would be usable for a flake if that was good flint. And there's that rollout kind of thing. <clears throat> All right, so trim it a little bit. Oops. I think I'm off camera when some of these incidents are happening. Dang it. All right. The, the support is different. Um, you can hit, I'm gonna switch this one pound. You can hit more downward and if you gently support all along the thing sometimes you can keep from getting a, a, a very curving flick see that's not particularly curved that's really flat um but this is already not a very great i was inspired to do this by watching. Okay, so see, again, it's the way in which you can support underneath it and control it that allows you to get the thickish, flattish flake. And for me, it seems like I like, I like doing it in the air better because I let it give a little bit against the support. I, it's kind of a kinetic thing. I let it go against the support a little bit to keep it from uh, being as influenced by the support. Okay, so we're gonna try now and hit on the edge. See this big old curve? I'm gonna turn this around and reverse it, kinda. Nah, nah. But, it's the theory that matters, right? Sure. Change rocks. Here's another problem rock. And there's method in my madness in showing this. All Georgetown is not the same. Everybody thinks all rock is the same. It's not. The fact that, of course, everybody doesn't think that either, so I just said something that's not true. 
don't mentally get a stereotyped image of rock types. You know, don't think to yourself, yeah, I'm gonna order me some XYZ rock. Well, that's not good enough. You may get, you may get great stuff, you may get crap, depending upon the particular purveyor of XYZ rock. This is too flat really to do this on. That's too flat too. Tilt that down and hit there and put pressure on it. And by putting that pressure on it, I made it curve. So now I've got a platform that is not too flat. Um, of course I hit too shallow. So now I combed it, darn my eyes. And now I broke it. So see how that rolled out? But that's a pretty good, eh, that's not the worst arrowhead spall ever made. Not by far. And I can take and make a full size core out of this. So I didn't really hurt myself. You might think, well, that's just terrible. Well, yeah, but I got rid of half of the square edge and everything. So hi, look, look, look. Got rid of the rest of that square edge. So now, and if this was the kind of material, this is good all the way through, but if this was the kind of material that um, is bad in the middle, well, that's in the middle. So then I've got, uh, now instead of working it bifacially down to a core that's problematic and, and all junk in the middle, if you are able to split things like that kind of, then you can stay on the good side. As I was saying, George says none of the same. Um, I have seen people marketing Georgetown that's all machine hit. And all machine hit Georgetown isn't, isn't the same because some of it's pretty clean and not all broken up with all the fractures radiating into it. And some of it looks like it was chopped with chopped with by an, by an angry weasel And so that's more of an issue. Hammerstone type platforms. You just make them at a different angle. Okay, um, the moral of that last story was get your rock from a good source. <coughs> this here is self-collected obsidian. And obviously at the time I collected it, I was under the influence of sage fever or something. I think what happened was, is near the end of the trip, it was a desperation move that we'll just grab some rocks and you know, deal with them later. Well, now it's later. A lot of this kind of stuff you have to be sort of careful on because if it's too lumpy and, and bumpy, then there's no way to hit it that's sort of safe where you're not just hitting on a big round thing which is a whole nother issue. That's one of the things I wanna show you. When you get an old piece of obsidian that's got a lot of weathering rind or core or cortex on it or whatever, they're pretty darn tough. And, and sometimes it's a whole lot harder to get into it than you would think. I've got some stuff, you about have to put it on the driveway and bipolar it. But anyway, so there's a fairly decent spall. And again, you know, I had the gentle flat support underneath, but I wasn't putting pressure. I'm just letting it, with this, I was just letting it sit with the weight on my hand. And so it didn't curve or make the plate go weird or anything. I saw a video the other day where somebody just hit a little core and reverse hinged the crap out of it. I don't think really understood why that occurred. But anyway, let's see if there's anything else I can do here. Remember, I don't know what I'm doing. That's why I broke that. I got a too thin, and looks like there could have been something wrong with that internally. When you when you get rocks in the field that there's a lot more failures if you get things that have a lot of surface cracks and and issues. 
because there's irregularities in the rocks you don't know about. That's not set up right. But I decided to just uh, just try and use the small spalling hammer even for a lot of stuff that wouldn't normally be done with a spalling hammer. My inspiration on this was watching someone who is extraordinarily good do a demo. And the demo was that a new napper, I guess had been directed at a napping over two, said, Spaller, whose initials I will, I can't say his name, but his initials are J. Redfern. So anyway, <clears throat> went over to him with a couple of nodules of Georgetown. So he took one of the nodules and very rapidly, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge nodule, but like that, very rapidly knocked off about 10 gorgeous little spalls, all of which were perfectly flat and, and thick, and I mean, they were just wonderful. I was in awe. But then he proceeds, and I think he was using a three pound hammer. He wasn't using this little dinky thing. He probably didn't own one like that. Um, but so then he proceeds to make a great ax head thing out of the core that remained with the spalling hammer. Never switched tools. So see again, flattish, i to show you this side. Flattish, practice doing, practice your, messing with your angles and your support until you get stuff kind of flattish. Now, unfortunately, big bulbs are a given a lot of the time with brittle material, which is yet another reason to be mad at igneous stuff. I was trying to not bulb that one too bad, but you know, they just, they, they bulb. Anyway, so he made that thing. Man, I don't know what talking today, bad. But, a key takeaway. So then, like at another nap in, I borrowed a spalling hammer from said initialed person and was attempting to spall out a difficult, difficult material. A material that shall be known as rock from heck fire mangard. <clears throat> well, I was holding the hammer like this and swinging, and I was not, I think it was a three pounder, and I was not accelerating it very well at all because of the problem that I showed you earlier. So then, <clears throat> Mr. R, as he shall be known, basically said, don't swing it like that, just choke up on it and, and stab with it. And so once I started choking up on it and then stabbing with it, I started having success. Now sometimes you gotta stab pretty quick, but it's the, it's the acceleration of it and the linear weight of it that does what, does what needs to be done. And that's, that's Georgetown. I already had a piece of Georgetown. Let's try this big old boulder here. And let's do it with a three pounder. I am such a glutton for looking like a moron online. Nope. Not a good platform. I didn't get it downward enough.
I need it steeper. Still not great. Oh well, hold on. All I'm doing here is just kind of getting that out of the way, and I could do that with, let's do it with this little bopper here, or little. Here. The more you practice stuff with whatever tool you want to get good at. So now I've gotten that out of the way enough so I can hit up here probably. And that's not, let me show you. That's not ideal. It would have been nice if I had gotten a little bit steeper, but again, I haven't done this so much that I've internalized in my targeting computer, the angles. I mean, I got the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna try and not support it too much. I've gotta support a little bit. I've gotta try and accelerate this. All right, folks, that's all, we're done. I'm never making another video. You just saw Freeze Cracked do what Freeze Cracked always does. Snatch defeat from victory or vice versa. Yay. Man, I can throw that out in the wild and somebody say, oh man, that old bull's good. Right? Sure. Ah, see? Goodness gracious. Well, that's not good. But actually, it's not bad either. I think this roll right here was caused by mul the multiple hits. I'm not positive of that, but at any rate, it's thick enough that I can work that off. I think I could probably get a five inch point or so out of that, which for me, you know, okay. I mean, the, the, the debacle was a bit embarrassing, but we don't care. I mean, I do care. I'll, I'll cry once I'm off camera, but. Okay. That actually wasn't a bad platform. The problem I don't really like where I'm going with this though. Because if I go into here, platform's okay, but then there's all this huge mass here. What to do, what to do? I think I'm gonna leave that for a minute. Not hurting anything. Boy, that's not gonna work. Probably shouldn't have made this video. This might be too embarrassing even for my standards. All right. Really, again, it's the concepts. Get the concepts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what happens when you don't control it. Also, by the way, The artist formerly known as JR, um, can take a flake so fast with his hammer that it hurts my ears. There's nothing wrong with the side of this hammer there's something wrong with my ability to accelerate it. So here we go. Wow.
mommy. Okay. You think that I'm giving up on that, but you're wrong. I don't give up. I don't give up on nothing. So there's three spawns. That's insane. Go in the air. <laughs> I'm not quitting. Y'all. <clears throat> I think there's probably some kind of Y'all. Oops. I lost the cable feed for a minute there, but at the back. All right. I have no idea why that particular angle is so beastly, but I've I don't have it to where I can hold it in the air because there's no way to grab this. So let's, hang on. Okay, look, pull back in, jumped off. So, so it was, it was broken in there and then I head down here and it jumps off. And all kinds of cone damage and stuff in it. By the way, Petronella's amoeba. Doesn't get better as it gets larger from a standpoint of workability. Just so you know. The main difficulty, again, is controlling the larger, heavier tool. If you don't have a lot of physical strength, you know, it's not one of them kind of things you can just grab that thing and intellectually deal with it. Scammer. Not hitting high enough.
Again, you know, it's, it's just kind of hold your hand flat, just hold it on there. And then you can hit sort of downward and let the, let the flake run inward along your fingers. But if you will get your little hammer and try to continue to continue to practice using it even with your gut down in size and stuff. Practice accelerating it. You might find that you get where you can do some stuff. This is a pretty tough rock. <clears throat> the video does demonstrate though, the there is no substitute from being able to accelerate enough mass rapidly enough to get into whatever material or deal with whatever material you're swinging. Um, when I first started trying to do the, the traditional type work, you know, with antler, I was battering the heck out of a lot of edges and not not getting flakes in their shade and I didn't really understand what was going on but the thing is that the broader contact area and the larger mass of the billet just required a higher velocity than I was generating to uh, to work right. So sometimes it just pays to fling at stuff. Look I'm stopping by.